So we're going to do a quick introduction to the uh, NOAA meter that we use for glucose testing here at uh, Kaiser Oakland Richmond Emergency Departments. Uh, in terms of an introduction to the meter, what we have here is we have a strip port on the top. This is where we actually insert our strips. At the bottom we have our IR scan port and for the, rest, for the most part the rest of it is kind of touch screen. You can either use these keys here or you can use these keys here with the power button. Um, in terms of starting out with the use of this, it wants you to enter your operator ID. So you're going to go ahead and scan it. And so we're in. One of the nice things about the Nova meter is once you're in, you'll see up there where it says Operator Josh Burke, you actually stay logged in for uh, you know, essentially around five minutes. So you can run multiple patients at a time and as long as you don't log out, you don't have to keep logging yourself back into the same glucometer over and over again. Um, I'll go back here. This is the initial screen that we see uh, after we've already logged in. It's defaulted to run a glucose test, but you can also do QC and menus as well. So for this case, we're going to go do a quick QC. So I'll show you what that looks like. We press the center button here and it's going to ask us to enter the strip lot. Now here are the strips that we use with the Nova meter. You'll notice first of all that they're dated. That's an important piece. Uh, essentially the way these work is they're good for six months. Looks like we're not quite at six months here. Um, but this, this vial of strips is dated for six months. There's an open date and an expiration date. So we would say that this is not dated correctly and we could go ahead and throw this away per policy. Uh, all right, so an introduction to the strips themselves. We have the sample application element here, and then we actually have the metal contacts, which allow the test to occur. Um, so in order to scan the strip lot, we find the barcode here, and then we go ahead and scan it. And we're done. Easy as that. And then it says enter QC lot. This is our, these are our QC reagents. Uh, with these guys, you always want to shake them. Sorry, it looks great on video, doesn't it? You want to shake them before you use them so that you can kind of steer them up a little bit. You'll uh, notice there's also a space here for an expiration date. These are good for three months. Six months for the strips, three months for these. You want to find the barcode and then do the same operation with scanning the barcode. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and accept. And then it asks us to go ahead and input the strip. So we take our strip. These have to be reasonably firmly seated. So give it a secondary shove in there and then we're good. Uh, it's recommended with this meter that we test completely flat to the finger or even pointed slightly downwards. Getting blood in this small sample well will take a meter out of service for an entire shift. And given that we only have a handful of these for the whole department, it's, real, uh, it's really paralyzing. So I'll just demonstrate quickly by just putting a dab of blood, or in this case reagent, on top of this cap. And the ideal technique is you just come down and touch it and it wicks it up using capillary action. You get a result within six seconds. The critical value results for this are going to be less than 40, greater than 449. Any value below or above those margins are going to cause you to use the critical lab value reporting tool. So once we've passed, we can go ahead and enter a comment. You have a bunch of different things that you could do, repeat the test, procedure error, or clean and disinfect it, for instance. And then you can go on after, of course, cleaning and disinfecting the meter. So uh, that's the explanation kind of for how to do a quick QC. From a patient testing standpoint, we're already defaulted, of course, as you go through for a patient test, you're gonna just click accept, and it's gonna ask you to enter your strip lot, then it'll ask you to scan the patient, and then it'll ask you to actually apply the sample. So these are the two land sets we use at both campuses. I wanted to point out the purple ones are, are not used as frequently because they're a shallower puncture at the site. When we are doing land sets of the fingers, we wanna make sure that we use the sides of the fingers uh, rather than the actual pad itself. Uh, there's, that creates a lot more pain and people don't appreciate it. So use the sides of the different fingers, ideally on the non-dominant hand. The pink one is the deeper land set. You would think because it's pink, it's associated with maybe babies or something along those lines and then it would be shallower, but it's not. So it's a little counterintuitive. Uh, and that's it. The last thing with this is don't use it on patients that are severely septic in code rooms who are clamped down and who have essentially uh, poor peripheral circulation. In those instances, please drop blood off of an IV and uh, run your sample uh, off of the IV draw as opposed to a finger lancet because you're going to get an inaccurate uh, result.